Hi everybody, welcome to my physical world as we continue our discussion on Israel. Um, we are working our way towards uh, talking about uh, archaeology in Israel, but before we do that, I'm doing some physical geography explanation of uh, the area of Israel. So the past two videos we've been talking about uh, the geophysical uh, aspects of Israel. And we talked about uh, the measurements and all the different uh, uh, regional uh, physical geography elements. Um, I need to explain now some processes that actually formed Israel in the way that its geophysical layout is. And you're going to find some really interesting stuff in this video, I hope. Um, some, I'm going to zoom into a certain area and show you some unique features that aren't found anywhere else in the world in terms of how they formed. Okay, so to understand what we're going to get ready to talk about, I need to lay out why Israelish. Uh, the area of Israel has certain features. And the main features that we're going to be talking about in this video is the massive Rift Valley, which is, goes along the eastern uh, border of Israel. It's the eastern border of Israel, and it's the west, western border of Jordan and up here, Syria. Okay, so... As we kind of zoom in in certain areas, you're going to notice that in my three-dimensional map that I have created, uh, based on LiDAR data and uh, uh, the shuttle mission that mapped uh, the Earth in three dimensions back in the early 2000s, plus the uh, Japanese Space uh, Administration, JAXA, uh, using three-dimensional software, I have developed a very accurate three-dimensional representation of Israel, which is kind of a teaser of what I'm going to unveil in uh, a later episode of Israel of a map that has never been created before that I have been working on uh, for over the past quite a few months. All right, so anyway, we're going to be talking about some physical aspects here to get an idea how the Central Mountains, the Judean Mountains, and, and the Negev and all that has formed. All right, so what we're looking at is we're looking at the extreme eastern edge of Israel. And this blue, bluish, steel bluish area here, or green, depending on your, your eyesight, this is known as the Jordan Rift Valley, as we move, uh, it, it's the Jordan Rift, Rift Valley north of the Dead Sea. And that's what you see this plain right here, this really flat stuff. This is actually the Dead Sea, okay? Up here, north of the Dead Sea, that is called the Jordan Rift Valley. And if we pan down south of the Dead Sea, actually comes way down here. Um, this is known as the uh, Valley of Aqaba, all right? But it's still part of the exact same Rift Valley, all right? Um, now, the Dead Sea is kind of broken in up in a couple of areas. Now, this is the Dead Sea as it has always been. And then down here, you'll notice in aerial photos and satellite images, you're going to see these, uh, this Dead Sea, which down here, which looks totally different than the Dead Sea up here. Um, this down here is actually relatively man-made in that they drain the Dead Sea 
into holding ponds. That's what you see these little stripes for. This, uh, the stripes right in this area here. These are actually uh, barriers and between each barrier are what they call um, evaporation uh, ponds. They're bigger than a pond, but evaporation lakes. This is where they evaporate the water and uh, extract the salt from the Dead Sea. So that's what these lines actually are. These are man-made features. And this part of the Dead Sea is not natural. Okay, this is, this is mainly man-made process in order to extract salt from the uh, salt sea, or the Dead Sea in this, in this case. All right, so anyway, coming back to an overview of Israel, the entire east border is a rift zone. And what is a rift zone? Well, basically, over here we have the African plate, in terms of plate tectonics, we have the African plate. And over here we have, uh, actually it's a couple plates. Um, in this area, it's the Arabian plate. Uh, and what is not really connected to Israel proper is down here we have the Indian plate, all right? And these plates move. The earth has internal processes and the underlying magma underneath the Earth's surface, um, it kind of circulates just like uh, boiling water in a pot sitting on a stove. And that circulation causes the plates, which are crusted uh, shells of the Earth, to move. All right? Now, the Arabian plate, which sits over here in this white area, and the African plate, which actually uh, Israel sits on, they spread apart, okay? Israel is actually moving to the west, and the Arabian plate is moving to the east. And basically what that does is sinks this entire region down, all right? Um, it's kind of like, um, well, as, as the African plate moves west and the, and the Arabian plate moves east, the area in between the plates drops in elevation. That is why the Valley of Aqaba and the Jordan Rift Valley is the deepest, uh, the deepest point on the Earth's surface above water, okay? The Marianas Trench, which is over by Japan, we'll, we'll talk about that and some other issue when I talk about plate tectonics. But this is the deepest, lowest point on the Earth's surface above water, okay? This is known as the, the African Rift Valley. And this starts all the way up here in these Lebanese mountains and goes all the way down into Africa and basically uh, Lake Victoria, Victoria Falls and all that. That's actually part of the Rift Valley. All right. But we're concentrating on Israel. Now, as plates move one way or the other, this is known as a, a rift valley. It creates these mountain ranges on one side, okay? And on the other side, there's also a relatively a mountain range, okay? I'm not showing it in, in this particular uh, example here. I'm only showing Israel. But the, as, this, as this rift starts spreading apart, it's, it's crumpling, it's pushing up the rocks, and it's creating these, these mountainous uh, landforms, okay? Now, here's the cool thing that I want to show you. Something that is unique only to Israel and the Sinai Peninsula, which is part of Egypt, okay, which sits over here, all right? 
there's, they're only specific to this region, and as a matter of fact, the name that they are called is unique because it's only found in this area. All right, so what we're going to do is I'm going to zoom in to a certain area of Israel. If you remember from last time, this area of Israel is called the Negev. It is a huge, arid region, desert region. Uh, nothing really grows here in terms of crops. Okay, they, they got some irrigation kind of stuff here and there. But this is a desolate area. And you're going to see them right away as, as we zoom in and pan around. You're going to see some features just pop out. Okay, we have one here, we have one here, and we have a big one sitting right here. These features are known as Mektesh, Mektesh, okay? That is uh, a Hebrew word, and Mektesh is a word that is used for only this type of feature. And this is an erosion, uh, I'm gonna say crater to begin with, but it's not a crater, but it's an erosion crater for all sense and purposes, okay? Intents and purposes, sorry. All right, but it's actually a cirque. And a cirque is a very steep-walled landform that is caused by erosion. Now, what kind of erosion is it? Well, it's water erosion. So as the Rift Valley forms, okay, it's pushing sands and sediments, uh, in this case to the left, Okay, it's pushing all these sediments as it forms, and it creates these huge mountains of sediment, of, of different types of, of um, sands and things, okay? It, <clears throat> and that creates a big mound, all right? I'm going to try to ex illustrate it here pretty soon. Now... These mounds are made up of different types of sediments, all right? There are basically two types. One is um, limestone. It, 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 at, over time, the moisture in the sediments are evaporated and things like that, and it creates uh, limestone deposits. And everybody knows what limestone is. All right, in a, in a relative sense, all right? It's hard, it's crusty, all right? Uh, also, dolomites are formed in this area. And basically, that creates a, a hard rock crust, all right? So we have this big mound of sediment, huge mound of sediment, and on the top is this limestone uh sediment all right underneath that limestone is uh chalky material um uh not not so compact sand and that creates underneath that limestone sandstone and chalk all right so we have this crusty thing and underneath that crust is other rock types that aren't as hard, okay? Over time, erosion comes into play and some things happen. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to bring up uh, a, um, I'm going to bring up a uh, paint software here and I'm going to try to illustrate what is going on here. So I need a paintbrush, and let's see, we're going to 
build our mound of limestone. All right, so over time we have this big, big uh, dome. Um, not a dome, but this big heap of, of, of sand material, sediment, all right, that's being pushed up through this rift process. And then underneath, whoops, underneath we have this other material, which is our, our, our chalky material, our, our less hard stuff, all right? Now, what happens over time is we might get some erosion on the top, okay? And this allows, this, these, these, this erosion on top allows water to infiltrate underneath this hard shell. And then what that does is starts to eat away on the sandstone and chalk that's underneath this feature where eventually this breaks down and collapses over its, on, its, on its own weight, okay? And it creates this huge bowl or it's, this is called a cirque, okay? Now, how does, how does all this stuff es escape? Well, on a top view, the mound might look like this, okay? But softer material breaks through a certain point, all right? And then everything underneath that shell drains out this hole, okay? And it basically empties this, this limestone shell of all the material that's underneath it until all of this collapses under its own weight, okay? That is a mektesh, all right? That is how a mektesh uh, forms, all right? So I'm going to get this out of the way. So if we notice the three world's largest mekteshes, okay, we're going to zoom in over here. Here we have mektesh katan, which katan means small in Hebrew. We have mektesh gadal, which means large mektesh. Now if we notice, get my pointer here, Notice this point right here. This is where the softer material broke through and through holes in the top of that dome or that top of that shell eroded all, dissolved all the material that was underneath that shell and it flowed out this hole, probably right down into this wadi, right into the valley, okay? If we look at the Mechtesh Gadal, we see a couple broken areas, one right here, and there's actually another small one that you really can't, oh, it's right there, right here. Okay, so there was a couple breakaways that all the material inside this mektesh has ran out into the valley. Okay, that's what this material down here is. All right, it was everything that was inside this mektesh. The world's largest Mektesh is known as Mektesh Ramon, which is right here, and you see a whole bunch of breakthroughs. You got one here, you got one here, you got one over here, you got one over here, and it follows all these bodies. So this one has a lot of breakthrough areas. Now here is the city of Mitzpah Ramon in Israel sits right on top of this ridge, okay? And it overlooks the Mechtesh uh, Ramon uh, Cirque or crater, whatever you want to call it. The difference in elevation from this point in Mitzpah Ramon to the bottom of the Mechtesh is about 500 meters. So it's over 1,500 feet deep. So it's over 1,600 feet deep, actually. 
okay? But these features are only found in Israel and the Sinai Peninsula. There's some smaller ones in the Sinai, okay? Now, what is the size of Ramon? If I measure from end to end, okay? All right, so it's about here. We're talking about 34 kilometers long. And we're talking about oh, 10, 12 kilometers wide as, it, as it's at its widest point, okay? So, very dramatic landforms are created by this rift valley in Israel. All right, here's a couple other scenes I'm going to show you which look so beautiful. It's absolutely gorgeous. This is a Landsat image. Uh, from October, October 26, 2019. This is a Landsat image of the Matesh Ramon. But if you notice, you look at all the different colors in the natural. This is uh, this particular Landsat image I have in red, blue, and green, which is visible light. This is how you would see it with your own eyes. All right. And I'm going to turn off, I'm going to change the transparency back to zero so you actually see it opaque. Look at those colors. Are those not uh, beautiful? Just beautiful. And here is Mitzvah Ramon right here, the city right here. All right, so this is how you and I would see it uh, flying on the International Space Station looking down at Israel, looking at uh, Mechtesh uh, Ramon. Now, let's look at it in, um, in uh, uh, infrared. Look at this. Is this gorgeous or what? Uh, Mechtesh uh, Ramon, if you took a tour over to Israel and you and you took a tour to one of these Mateshes, especially Ramon, they actually have have a um, a day trip where you go down inside of the Cirque, the Matesh, and they have set up where they have gone around and collected minerals uh, from each one of the areas inside of the Cirque and have set up where you can create, uh, you know, I don't know how much it costs. Um, um, a couple of YouTubers, uh, Sergio and Rhoda, uh, did a episode where they went down and you can, you can uh, get a glass jar and you can take all the different sands and stuff that they have collected at the bottom of the Mektesh and you can, you know, make art inside this jar or whatever, and it's natural. Um, nothing has been filtered out or anything. It's just, it's just absolutely gorgeous. But this feature is just, it's just amazing on the geographic features that you find in Israel. So this right here, this image is satellite, is uh, Landsat 8 satellite image, and I'm showing you in infrared bands. So you can see the different colors of the minerals that show up inside this mechtesh, okay? Um, now, I'll show you a couple pictures here, um, and I have to give credit, because I did not take these pictures. Um, this first image was taken by uh, an individual named Esther Inbar, and she shows in a picture, a photograph, of as the rock, the sediment rocks uh, lay on top of each other and form together these beautiful rock formations which shows you all the different types of minerals that form inside these rocks. This right here is a uh, picture of, um, I believe this is Catan, uh, Mechtesh uh, Catan, which means uh, small Mechtesh. 
All right. So here are the valley sides. We are inside of the Metesh. Notice the vibrant colors and the different minerals. All right. All of this stuff used to be up. This used to be the roof of this huge dome before it collapsed. All right. So all these beautiful formations, you can see the uh, layers of sediments that laid over when uh, the rift process created this huge mound. And then as the softer material inside the Mechtesh uh, um, drained out, this massive roof just collapsed. All right. So this is Catan. And then uh, one more view. This is an aerial view of the uh, of a lot of Ramon. Okay, Mechtesh uh, Ramon. Sorry for my my uh, pronunciation of these terms. Okay, this this image was taken by uh, Andrew uh, Shiva, and these pictures are from Wikipedia, by the way. Just so you know. But I want to give credit to the people that took these pictures because these are just absolutely gorgeous. But Ramon, you're looking at this image. You're looking all this all this material used to be the roof of this massive landform that has collapsed. All right. So anyway, I just wanted to give you a, uh, a little little tour of some. Uh, geophysical, some more geophysical parts of Israel as we begin, uh, continue our exploration of archaeology in Israel. And I hope that you stick with me and watch these videos. And I can't wait to unveil uh, the map that I've uh, been working on hard for the quite a few months trying to uh, create a map that has never been done before. So stay tuned and we'll see you on the next episode. Uh, please subscribe uh, to My Physical World YouTube and remember we have a Patreon page. Uh, please consider supporting us um, so we can bring some great content to you and you guys have a great day and we will see you later.